It's true, Pokemon has been around for a very long time and has become a worldwide phenomenon of a franchise. That being said, its newest entry, Pokemon Sword and Shield, has received some controversies back and forth, but also some praises. And I'm here to just go over my list of what I like, I'm in the middle about, and what I dislike about the game. And I hope that you consider my opinions and compare them to your own, and we start some pretty good conversations in the comments below. That being said, let's get right into it. I'm going to start with what I like about the game, and the first things first, like, I love that they kept the uh, idea from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and how you can see the Pokemon walking around. It makes the world feel more alive, like you're actually hunting and looking for that one specific Pokemon and the fact that you can just see them just walking around and interacting with the environment and some even like run up to you, they get surprised, they either run away or they try and chase you or they interact with other Pokemon, especially when you're camping where you can really see them come to life. I think that's an amazing feature, and I hope that every other Pokemon game uh, continues to go along with that. That being said, they also kind of kept in the random encounter mechanic from past games, where if you see an exclamation point like in the grass, you can walk up to it, and it'll show that Pokemon, whether it be one that you've already seen walking around, or the increased chance of you seeing a more rare Pokemon. Uh, that's actually the case of how you catch some Pokemon within the Galar region, and some can only be caught with Random Encounter, and I'm fine with that. I don't think that's a problem, but I do think that it should also be a very rare chance that you can see these rare Pokemon walking around. It's not really that big of an issue, which is why it's not really in the middle, but you know, it's like for consideration. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing like a Cursula just swimming around like all depressed, like it'd be like a really cool rare sight, sight. It's like, oh my god! That's super rare. I, I can just see it walking around, then you can go up and catch it. I just think, just add the experience a bit more. Uh, another thing I like about the game is the music. Like, this is by far the best music a Pokemon game has ever produced. And it's it's great. There's, ver there's a variety of different tracks throughout each area. Uh, the gym battle is cool. The battle theme is cool. I didn't get sick listening to one track during this entire game. Everything just sounded great and that really makes me happy for the future pokemon games that this is the standard of music and also a lot of these tracks would be really good in smash bros so hopefully uh with future installments of smash or more installments with smash ultimate fighters that we get more pokemon tracks and maybe a new uh galar region stage so that'd be pretty sweet but we're not here to talk about smash we're here to talk about pokemon uh, another thing i like this actually kind of grew on me the more I played the game and just kind of looked at it was the legendaries. Zekane and Zamazenta are actually really cool. I like the idea that they're like mystic wolves uh, going around. In fact, that there's one that signifies one symbol and the other signifies another. I mean, I'm not against the different legendaries in the past, and this is more just my opinion. I I love the very different legendaries from past Pokemon, but the fact that they tried to go with different themed Pokemon, I, I appreciate that idea, and I wouldn't mind it being repeated again, but I hope that they don't choose to stick with that kind of method for making Pokemon. It's like, oh, do you want this wolf, or do you want this wolf, or do you want... I kind of like the, uh, the different legendaries more. Or like ones like uh, like Groudon and um, fuck, what's the big whale one called? Uh, Kyogre. Like, you want awesome whale or do you want big lava dinosaur? Like, I like that more preferably, but I can respect the fact that they wanted to go with like a similar type legendary deal, and I think they did a good job with it. I just hope it's not a repeating thing. Like maybe every now and again, but not a repeating thing. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the regions. The Galar region is actually beautiful. Every Pokemon game that I've played, uh, they've always found a good way to either reinvent the imagination of a region or build and make even better. And now that we're on the Switch, the fact that the Galar region is so big and massive with these huge buildings and big scenes to go across and everything, it's just... It's, there's a lot to look at and it's all very pretty. And they also do a good job with that in the wild area when you first see it. We'll get more into the wild area uh, later in the video, but the fact that the Switch, they able to, they were able to create this good of a world on the Switch. Graphic, graphical reasons or not, I still think that they continue to expand upon 
each region and make it better than the last. Now, it could be better because it's on the Switch, but it's still a massive difference between the DS games, the Game Boy games, of course, and to the Switch. There is a difference, it's just not as significant. But there is a difference and it is noticeable, and they did do a pretty good job for their first main Switch title. Now, there's also like some quality of life options that they added in. Like you could access your Pokemon box from wherever you are. You no longer have to go back to a Pokemon Center. Uh, you can change your Pokemon's nickname whenever you want, which I found to be really nice because sometimes I name a Pokemon get some stupid like I usually do, but I didn't think it was the right kind of stupid. <laughs> You can call that a reason so i could i could go to a pokemon center get my name changed and yada 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 all that stuff uh i also like how they're continuing with the idea to include pokemon and pokemon centers into one building i just think it's more convenient than going to different buildings that could be in different locations on the town that you're visiting uh the customization is also really good uh, their clothing is decent, and I like how different areas house different clothing, but I do wish that if you beat the game, like, all the clothing would just kind of universally be into one store. Like, it feels like a sense of progression at first, but after you beat the game and you want to buy a new outfit, you, but it's only located in this one store, I wish you, after you beat the game, all procs were kind of universal. That's just a little nitpick, nothing that really ruins it. All you gotta do is just memorize the location or just look it up and you can go find it. But they did do a good job with the clothing and you can change your trainer's hair, the diet, you can dye it, the eyes. Uh, there's different types of backpacks you can get and both look good for both the male and the female trainers. And just playing dress up is fun. Okay, so with that, let's move into the middle ground of this game and... <laughs> Oh boy, do I have a lot to talk about there. So what I mean by the middle ground is these are ideas that I see why they did, but I don't think they did them well, or I think they could have done them a lot better. One being the story. Now, the reason why this isn't in good or bad is because it's not great but then again pokemon's never been like praised for its story it's always been praised for like oh catch the cool monsters and go battle them but there's they've always included story elements and in past games uh they were really dragged out they were really inconvenient and they would stop your flow of going into gym battles like you would get past like a couple gyms and then you'd be dragged through this huge plot thing for like an hour and that really wasn't fun to me, which is why I can appreciate the way they did the story in this game, is because once you start doing gyms, there's only like a couple uh, dialogue stops along the way, but you're never taken off your path towards the next gym. Your entire purpose in this is just to go through every single gym and become the best, which is like what made Pokemon so fun to go through. But every ounce of story of the game is dumped right at the end i mean of course there's a little bit in the beginning that kind of like sets you up and is like "Ooh, what's this mean or what could that do and there's are those little dialogue stops i talked about uh do kind of build off one another but they're so brief and short and unmemorable that it really doesn't matter everything that this game wants to tell you you have to go through all the gyms to do now in a way i appreciate not being taken off my path and just going to gym to gym to gym to gym to gym and just fighting and battling and getting stronger but if you're gonna dump a story on me at the very end at least make it good this story was just lackluster and mediocre and wasn't really anything memorable and just super predictable and cheesy now again as i said before pokemon's not known for a story but it's Past entries, in my opinion, have been a whole lot better than this. And the fact that they just kind of throw it all on you, it just kind of makes it like, I don't really care. I've already become the best. Why do I have to do all this shit now? But the way I can see they made it better is if they made the story around your gym fights instead of something going on in the world and you have to go figure it out. If the story was based around like you becoming a better trainer and like loving your Pokemon and bonding with them and that is like what makes them stronger like it was like I'd say kind of like a hero rising story where you start at the beginning with this little animal you don't really know what the fuck you're doing and you're just kind of like going around messing everything up 
Uh, but again, the difficulty of Pokemon, like, it's never been hard. Like, I have never played a Pokemon game where I've actually struggled. And this is the same. So I don't know how that would work, but the fact that I'm going through all these gyms and then you're going to put me into a completely situation that I didn't really care about in the first place, at least make it something that I care about. So I like the way they did it, and the way that they didn't take me off my path of the gyms. I was able to just go all to the, go to all the gyms, barely any interruptions. I love that. But the story sucked, and it was really unmemorable. And they dumped everything on you at the end, and it just did not capture any interest to me. And that's just my opinion, though. Uh, another thing that I'm in the middle about is raids. Now, Pokemon raids. On paper sounds great you go and find a really strong Pokemon you and your friends can take it down using strategic battle strategies by type matching or using really strong moves or you get like a support and yada 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 and all that stuff team building see big Pokemon catch big Pokemon get rewarded awesome however the raids are super repetitive you once you've done one you've done them all you see a big Pokemon you weaken said Pokemon with your friends, you catch it, you get a shit ton of loot, you're on your way. There's nothing different about it. And it's all, there's like no build up to it whatsoever. You find this glowing red hexagon on the ground, you pick up some subwats, you wait a couple minutes, you see the big Pokemon. Now there is some strategy, it's just not very deep. It's basically don't die. And if your Pokemon are super fucking strong, you're not gonna die, especially if you have some friends with you, and even like the the characters that the game assigns you if you play alone, they're not that bad, although in the four to five star battle raids, they are just completely useless, and they pick the wrong type of Pokemon, and they throw the match, and that cool Pokemon you want is gone because your stupid computer assigned people just picked bad Pokemon and just threw the whole thing for you. That just sucks. That That's just bad. Also, raining is completely broken. For every raid you beat, you get really awesome moves, and you get EXP candies. Now, it is completely ch player's choice to use these items that you get. So, you can just take the XP you get from the raid, and you can go on, on your choice. But the game hands you these really overpowered candies, and all you have to do is, like, raid battle for, like, a half hour, and you get a ton of these candies, and you can just feed them to your Pokemon, and they gain just, like... 16 levels and if you do bigger star raids with your friends who have really powerful Pokemon Then you get the really big EXP candies, and then they give you your Pokemon about 30 levels. I gave my Sobel one XL uh, EXP candy and he went all the way up to level 30 something It was ridiculous <laughs> I'd already beaten the game at this time, but if I had done this with my uh, friends sooner and he just takes out like his level 80 Cinderace and just pyro balls the fucking Pokemon into oblivion. I, I just got a free level 30 Pokemon. It, it doesn't matter which one I get. I just feed it and boom, it's level 30. And that, <laughs> that's just stupid. It, balancing should be a bit better, but again, it's completely player's choice to do this. So I can't really say it's a bad thing. I just wish like it was handled a bit better. And like, like I said, the Reds are they're just super repetitive. You've done one, you've done them all, and they get really boring after you've done like 10 of them. If they like did different ways about these raids, like oh maybe you have to fight through certain Pokemon to get to the big Pokemon, or maybe you have to go through this really difficult area to navigate to get to the Pokemon, like different modes to get to there, and you can do it with your friends, and you can find cool items that would help you in the battle, or you can just find rare items in general uh, while searching for this big Pokemon. Or there's like interesting ways to find them like and it doesn't even have to like involve the wild area you can just kind of like travel to a different just cut screen to a different area and okay do this find the big Pokemon or just go straight to the big Pokemon you can handle the way you do the battle you can either go around and find cool shit or stuff that'll help you or you can just go straight there instead of just kind of like oh here's a dramatic cutscene there's the big Pokemon don't die and if you kill it you can catch it and you get a bunch of cool stuff and even if you don't catch the Pokemon which could be a Pokemon you already have you still get all that cool moves you get like a bunch of awesome moves and all the candies and the rare items and I don't know <sighs> it could just be better 
that leads on to my next point, which is Dynamaxing. Dynamaxing has got to be the laziest, yet coolest thing they've added. Dynamaxing, of course, the main trope of the game is you make your Pokemon go super big, and then it's got all these new and enhanced animation moves and stuff. Now, the problem I have with Dynamaxing is Dynamaxing is boring, and it's dumb. G Gigantamaxing is awesome and should have been way more focused on than just Dynamaxing. A, the difference between a Dynamax and a Gigantamax is that a Gigantamax still makes your Pokemon really big, but it also changes form. And then Dynamax is just over here, it's like, cool, it's big and it's glowing red now. I, that's cool. Big Pokemon. It's, like a Gigantamax Charizard and just a Dynamax Charizard. There's such a difference! It's just... It's cooler, and they have unique forms, and some of them are really cool, and some of them are really dumb, but they're still different. I, and the game doesn't really explain the difference between a Dynamax and a Gigantamax. Some trainers just have Gigantamax Pokemon, and you're just sitting there like, I want that cool transformation, instead of just my Pokemon getting bigger. How, how could you, like, mess up with that? You just... Mega Evolution was like the best thing they ever did, and it was just the best of both worlds. You get just cool Pokemon and you get cool moves. This is just big Pokemon, and then you just look at the trainer's cooler big Pokemon, and I guess you just don't get to find out. You gotta figure it out on your own. Go, go do it yourself. I don't know. Dynamaxing, cool but lazy and dumb. Gigantamaxing, that should have been. That should have been the fucking focus. Gigantamax you should have been focusing, not Dynamax. Now the dex cuts, uh, the reason why this is in the middle is because it doesn't really affect me. I have never gone through a Pokemon game and completed the dex. I've tried sometimes, but I just got demotivated. Now that being said, if you like doing the dex, that's fine. That's a part of the game and something you enjoy. And that's great, and I support you. And the fact that they cut the dex means you can't do that anymore. And that just sucks. Like, people want to keep updating their decks. Like, you, they caught all these Pokemon, they want to keep catching all the Pokemon. And the fact that they can't have them all in one place just kind of sucks. And that doesn't make any sense because if you can put Pokebank and every single Pokemon you want on your game card, why can't you put it on the Switch? Which is supposed to have better hardware than the DS. Or why not just put po Pokebank on... Uh, the Switch. You can transfer your accounts from the DS to the to the Switch. I don't see why that wasn't a thing. I, I really don't see why that just couldn't be a thing. That's just dumb. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the decks. I, it doesn't really affect me personally when it comes to the series, but to the people that it does affect, I understand, and I think you've been wronged. But yeah, so moving on from that, uh, the idea we're going back to the wild area. I know I said before that the wild area was... It was cool at first. Like, I made sure to say at first. That was a very key word about it. At first, the wild area is amazing. Like, it just blows you away. They show you this big field. And then you see the onyx off to the right. And you're just like, wow, this is, like, the real deal. This is what we've been wanting in Pokemon. The wild area in this game just becomes less and less cool the more you go through it because you just dreadfully realize how small it actually is and how uninspired it is. The idea behind the wild area is so cool and it can it's just it's a new plane of opportunity for Pokemon. But you go through this game and you see it expand like two or three times and even then the more you see it expand the less you see of it and you look at the map and the Galar region area where you explore and go to the different gyms compared to the wild area is just it's none the wild area is just really small and that sucks to say because the wild area is generally just it's just a cool idea. Not to mention, like, the weathering around the wild area. I can be standing, it just, 
it looks lazy. It's lazy. I'm standing in a grass field and there's sand blowing. Where is the sand coming from a grassy area? The desert area, that one little patch of sand you got on the wild area, is up there. That's where the sandstorm should be. Or you, maybe you should just create a sandstorm wild area, and a snow wild area, and a forest wild area, and a rock wild area, and a lava wild area. No, you got one big patch of grass with some lakes, with an ice spot and a sand spot, and that's it. And the weather just happens wherever the hell it wants. It can be snowing in a plane. It could be sandstorming in that one little glacier. In a pond, there's just this big fucking Gyarados, which is cool in its own way, but it's also just kind of like, really, you could have made a big ocean area where there's just tons of Gyarados and Lapras swimming around, but no, there's, there's just this one little fish pond that I'm pretty sure the Gyarados is dying in because you can't get sufficient food in that tiny pond for the Gyarados. It's dumb. It's, I know, it's a video game, it's just supposed to be realistic, but I, a fucking tiny-ass pond is the last place I expect to see a giant Gyarados. There could have been different wild areas, and I know you could have done it, because as big as Breath of the Wild is, you put in the smallest open-world area in a Pokemon game. How do you fuck that up? I don't... Cool idea, bad execution. Just first game syndrome on like your fucking, I don't even know how many Pokemon games there are, but like first game syndrome when it comes to being on an actual console. Like, come on. You had tons of great examples in your company already and you just decided to do it like this. What? Just whatever. Wild area, cool, amazing idea. Bad execution. What's the next thing on this list? Uh, camping. Um, camping is cool. It's the new way you do your Pokemon's love increase, where they, you, the more you bond with your Pokemon, the better they perform in battle by performing more crits, dodging more attacks, and cur curing status ailments on their own, which is amazing. Cool mechanic, it's stupid broken, and I'm glad it's not competitively legal, even though I don't hate myself enough to do competitive Pokemon, and I never will. But, it's just kind of like, it takes forever, it's boring, you just wave a stick in their face and then they hit it, and then you can cook them a curry, and that's about it. Now I've heard there's more, there's some more toys in the game, I just didn't really care enough to find them. Uh, but yeah, camping is just kind of meh. It's there, you can do it, if you want to raise your Pokemon's love stat and just make the game even easier, go for it. It's just good. Well, Pokemon can also interact with each other. You get to see them walking around, you can pet them, they smile at you, they express their feelings. Yeah, that's all cool. And that's cool. But it's just, it's still just kind of meh. Well, we got the middle ground out of the way. <laughs> Why don't we get into the real bad stuff where I can't say anything good at all. Let's do the dislikes of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh boy. Well, we've made it to the bad parts of the list, and uh, I gotta say, oh boy, I have nothing good to say about these at all. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, the characters. They're just unmemorable, typical, happy-go-lucky, predictable, just bunch of shit that we've seen before. Your rival hop is just the same as it's been for many years when it comes to Pokemon rivals. Ever since they decided to stop going with the mean, uh, competitive trainer and just hop on over to the uh, happy-go-lucky is always wanting to be your best friend and just is the most predictable boring character ever now hop does go through a bit of character development but that's all at the end where they dump all the story with you in the first place and it's just I don't like hop he's just I'm so sick of the rivals just being happy-go-lucky people who you really don't care about and all you want to do is just make them suffer like every time i fought hop i'm like oh my god i'm gonna kick your pet's ass again and then i'm just gonna move on and you're not gonna learn like oh my god it doesn't even feel satisfying to beat them it's just like he's in the way and sonya barely any development there too she's just kind of there to tell you what's happening and give you the lore of the area but there's really nothing that that really just transforms her it's just so ugh. And then there's Swordward and Shieldbird, the two worst characters 
I have ever seen put into a Pokemon game. They look dumb. They're... They're just bad! They're annoying! And they're not even... They're actual serious characters. Like, these characters have a main, like, part in this story. I can understand if they're gag characters, but no, they're just there. They're dumb looking and they're... There's nothing good about these characters. There's nothing redeeming about these characters. And when you get to this part of the game, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They're just there. And they just piss you off. That's it. Not, the champion's not even that good of a character. He's just kind of like, Oh, go get strong, kid. You're going to be the best. I'm so proud of you and your Pokemon. Oh, you beat me. Okay. Yes, you're the champion now, kid. That That's it. It... I didn't feel anything for any of these characters at all. Bed ate a little bit, but that's it. Just a little bit. And even then, Bed just was, she just pissed me off. She was the rival in this game that actually, like, made you feel like this is the rival that's mean. And she was, and she did a good job of that for the most part, but I really didn't care about her. I don't know. You can't replace Gary. You can't, I have not seen a rival as good as Gary Oak, or Blue, or whatever you want to call it, in like, in years. I just haven't. And I don't know if that's, be if it's nostalgia talking, or if it's just, uh, that's just the way I prefer things, but I just, there is no good characters in this game. I, I don't know what to say. Now, that leads me on to my next thing, which is the final battles. Typically in Pokemon games, or at least the ones that I've played, uh, there's always an Elite Four that makes you the champion. Like, you go through all the gyms, you qualify as one of the best trainers in the in the region, and then you go and you fight the Elite Four, and then you become the champion, like the actual champion of that area. Yeah, the way this game does it, um, the first part about it, I think it's fine. Like, okay, so first you go into, like, the arena, it's the Grand Finals, this is what decides who remains champion, the unbeatable champion, or all these challengers. Now you go up against your rivals first, which I think is a great idea. It shows how far you've gone, and how far your rivals have gone, even though they lack character to begin with, but it's more like on you. And you fight your rivals again to prove that you're still stronger than them and that you're better than them, and then you move on and you fight the champion, or the and the Elite Four. Now the other battles that are not your rivals, they're not unique new characters, there's no Elite Four, they're just rehashes of the gym fighters who have already fought. And that, to me, is lazy. It was... I, I just don't understand it. You got there by beating these trainers, or by beating these gym leaders. You have already proven to them that you are stronger than them, and that you deserve to be at this spot. What does fighting them again prove anything? You're still gonna beat them. Like, you've already beaten them before. You don't feel like this is a challenge. It feels like a rehash. And you already come this far just to fight the same people. I... Their Pokemon don't even change that much. They more or less just use the same team with maybe one or two new Pokemon. And it's still the same Dynamax or Gigantamax Pokemon. It's just, why? Why? Then you fight the champion, and even then you just like, you just, it feels like a waste of time. I would have rather have just been fighting the rivals and then go and fight the champion, because the rivals beat those people too. They're just there to pad out the rest of the slots. It doesn't make sense. An Elite Four was so much better. It was so much better. Okay, next thing. The lack of endgame. Now. When you beat the game, like when you beat the champion, you get the credits, you get the champion screen, yada yada, woohoo, you're the best. And then, usually, uh, there's like more secret areas to unlock, there's more legendary Pokemon that you can go and find, or there's Victory Road where you can find more rare Pokemon, or just something. And there's even, the, there's even like side, there's even another story. Now, there's kind of a story? But it's really, you go back to all the gyms with some of the gym leaders. You fight a Dynamax Pokemon in that gym. And then you go to the next gym, you do the same thing. You do that like five times. You catch the legendary. That's it. That's all the end game is. 
is nothing more. There's no new areas. There's no changes to the wild area. There's no other trainers you can fight that are around the map. It's just go back to the gyms, fight big Pokemon, catch the legendary, that's it. They even tell you at the end, like, go to the fighter tower to fight more strong and to fight more strong challengers. I'm like, oh, so this must be where the Elite Four. No, it's just an access way to get to online battles. That's it. You just go and fight people online with your Pokemon. I I don't know why they decided to segue it like that, but Oh god, I was so pissed. I was like, really? There's no, like, other trainers that are actually challenging. There's no new Pokemon or no new exclusive wild area part where if you beat the game, you can now cool go to this cool area where there's a bunch of new things. Like, nothing. It's just, it's just recircling the map and catching the legendary. That, again, is lazy. And I'm just very disappointed in that. And then the lack of innovation in the game is my last point. Now, they made a claim during development saying, it's like, oh, we don't want to put the Pokemon in the game or do all this other stuff because we want to add in more cool animations. All those new animations went to the Dynamax Pokemon for their Dynamax moves, which, by the way, are all repeated on every Dynamax Pokemon. If you use a Max or Dynamax Fire move on a Charizard, it's going to look the same as if you use it on an Arcanine. Or if you use a Max Shadow move with a Gengar, it's going to look the same with another... Uh, or Shadow move, Ghost-type move. It's going to look the same if you do it with, like, a Jelly Scent. It's, they, if you have that type of move, it's going to be on there. And what baffles me is, like, why did... You've already expressed the fact that you can make cool and unique attacks for certain Pokemon with the Z-moves in Pokemon Sun and Moon. I don't understand how you couldn't expand upon that in Sword and Shield. Like... <laughs> You just put in these robotic animations. Like, they just... For most of them, they just stand there. They don't even move that much. They either do, like, the same gesture that they do when they're not Dynamax, or they just stand there and something falls from the sky. And then there's, like, certain AoE effects, but that doesn't really change the battle that much. But... <laughs> it's just... It's not that impressive. And the animations for the other attacks that are not Dynamax... They just look the same as they did in the other games. Some of them might have better particle effects, the others maybe slight changes, but it's more or less just hopping up and down, random hands showing up, just the same thing that we're all used to. And honestly, it's just upsetting. So we've gone over the good, the bad, the good, the middle, and now the bad. Uh, my final rating for this game is a 6 out of 10. Reason being, if you are a longtime Pokemon fan, should you play this game? Uh, yeah. If you want to, it's just another Pokemon game. Nothing really different, but it's more Pokemon. And it's got some new Pokemon. If you like that, then I think it's worth a playthrough. Maybe not right now, but I'd suggest either waiting for a discount, or if you have a gift card you need to spend, or something like that. You just wait for that and not spend as much money or if you're new to the series i recommend that you do play this game but i also but before you play this game i recommend that you go and play some of the previous titles and uh go to see where this came from and then move on to this like play a classic game maybe play one more and then come to sword and shield and i think it would be worth your money at that point but it's just more Pokemon, and but it's on the Switch. That's about all I can say. It's just more Pokemon, and it's on the Switch. There's some goods. There's definitely some goods. There's some great ideas. And there's also just a bunch of disappointment. But it's Pokemon. And it's sad to say, like, like that's the excuse. It's like, yeah, there's some flaws, but, you know, it's Pokemon. But it's also, it's, it's Pokemon. Nothing really striking, but... I did enjoy my playthrough. I did enjoy my playthrough. I had fun, but once I beat the game, I really felt like there was nothing much more to do. 
And the game's not really that long. Like, if you sit down, you could probably beat this game in about eight hours. If you just catch Pokemon, go through the gyms, and that's it. Like, don't even explore, like, even like a little bit of exploration in the wild area of what there is. The main, like, extra gameplay comes into effect is like with raids and with just hunting around and completing the decks. But if you just are like a very straightforward person and you just want to get through the gym speed the game, you could probably get this through, you could probably get through this about 8 to 10 hours. So it's not a big game and I don't think it's a game worth $60, but I did have fun with it. And I do recommend it, but don't expect too much. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, this was different than my past reviews. So if you're new and this is the first review you've seen of mine, uh, I'm going to ask you to watch my other two reviews. They're a lot different style than this. And I would like for you to give me some feedback. If you like reviews like this where I just kind of rant and be more personal about games uh, with a little bit less editing. Obviously they'll get better as time gets on, as time goes on when I have more footage to work with and more of a game plan. But they're also going to be longer and have less editing. The other reviews have, they're kind of more of like just a regular type of review. But they have better editing, and it's a, it's scripted. This was just kind of me speaking as me. And uh, I kind of liked it, but I want to know what you think. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!